DJ do top in this room. How you doing? It's Nick checking in, and um, I'm displaying one of my hoodies with the running up design. Uh, there's a link to get the T-shirt in the video, and if you guys like the design, it's just something I think it got a little bit of sauce. But uh, for the real estate investors, you know, you wear it. People ask you what's that, like you're always branding yourself. Everybody knows what you do. But I'll get to the video now. This week has been pretty uneventful, I would say. I haven't really looked at any houses. I've actually been thinking about tweaking my strategy. As you know, I'm still with my mother living in her basement. Well, I have my own room. But I'm thinking about moving out into a multifamily. And that's how I do it, house hack. And we got to pick up a property. It's going to take a couple months to get it up and running. And then do my next deal while I live on my own. And that way I pick up another property that few years down the road once I, you know, decide to move on. I have a multifamily property. I have a pretty nice one because it's one I'm living in. And then I'll have that rental income. And I'll keep my rental expenses very low. And I believe on bigger pockets they call it house hacking. So I would like to house hack a property. And I think that would be the best option for me if I can't find a house. Because there's not that much available stock on the MLS when I'm looking. And, um... It's just not there. Like with regular single family houses, the the units pop up all the time. Like it's probably a new house on there right now. I get updates like every day about that. But for the multifamily it's just not there. So I told one of the realtors, you know, send me updates for multifamilies and four bedrooms. So I might just try and play in that game. So there's that. Also, I met with uh, met in person to do Mark Whitten. Uh, it was a it was a deal I looked at. It was a series of three properties, and those three properties I'll post those the houses. I'll put those houses together and post them. There's a series of three properties that are they were all through two bedrooms. They were supposed to be three bedrooms. There's a cluster of properties. What I could offer on them was a little bit less than what uh, Mark and well, it was really Mark Stewart trying to sell me. But uh, we're, mar we're going to go down to, so we didn't, we weren't unfortunately able to work out a deal. But it was a group of three houses. Um, each one was a three bedroom. Each one was a two bedroom. One was supposed to be a three, but um, Section Eight rules, which is what I would have rented to Section Eight, they switched up. Where in Baltimore, you used to have something. It's basically, it's still functional because that's how the house was built even though it's out of date and like not really functional, but nothing you could do that's how your house is built. They have something where you have a, like a pass-through bedroom where like there would be a bedroom on each end of the hallway and in the middle there would be a bedroom, but you'll be able to get to that bedroom from another bedroom. So you have like a walkthrough where somebody has a door. You have two doors to one room and one of the doors connects to the other bedroom. And because there's no window, Section 8 is saying it's not a room, even though before it, had, it was a room technically because it had the skylight in there. It was supposed to have a skylight, as long as you had a window or some natural light, it was a um, room, but they're saying that's not safe. So actually, I would only been able to rent it as a two bedroom, so that dropped the price down a lot. Because two bedrooms, you can get X amount of dollars, you know, three bedrooms, you get a little bit more. So I had to pass on the deal, but the deal was pretty good, and um, it was cool to me to do Mark Whitney. He was a good dude. Um, hopefully, we can do some deals in the future. I'd be uh, very, you know, I was real excited to meet him a little bit because, you know, he's big time. He's on the breakfast club and all that. Unfortunately, we couldn't work out a deal because, you know, business business comes first and I got to make money. You know, even though, you know, you're cool, but, you know, you're cool dude, but I have to handle my business. So that was a, that was a little highlight. I got to meet, I got to meet y'all. So that was cool. That was cool for real. And then, um, also, because the housing um, isn't really, I'm not really seeing that much that I like. I've been looking at alternative investments. There's a brewery in um, South Florida, you know, you know, you know my future home. There's a brewery in South Florida that I've been 
kicking the tires at a little bit. Um, basically, there's this guy who um, he wants to sell five percent. He owns ten percent. He wants to own sell five percent of his stake in the brewery. And uh, I've been I've been looking into that. I'm not that good at reaching reading financials, so I had to get somebody to help me. But um, that seems pretty cool to me, like an investment that um, that seems cool. So I don't want to get too excited. And, you know, who doesn't like to? You know, some people don't like to drink, but most people like to drink. It'd be cool to have a little restaurant. It'd be something I think it'd be cool to own. It's a little bit more sexy than real estate. That's I think that's why it caught my eye. So I'm trying to. Take a step back, slow down, and really look at the numbers. But the numbers do look kind of good from what I've seen. But my financial statement analysis skills aren't the best. Um, I know a little bit from reading books, but I'll probably have to see if I can get my man JJ Hanna, business consultant, to help me go over the numbers and see if it makes sense as an investment. Well, I'm looking at it is because it's a passive investment and I won't have to do anything. And um, it won't detract from me doing my real estate thing. It would be a way for me to diversify, but it won't make, be a situation where I have to detract from what I'm doing. It's like I could put a couple dollars here. I don't have to have the stress and the headaches of managing real estate or managing whatever. Uh, I'm a minority ownership. Somebody else is handling all the day-to-day -day stuff. I just get a little check uh, every month, and then I would get money on the back end when they sell, which would be amazing uh, if the price goes up. Might be something worth taking a swing at, so I've been looking at that. Um, also, I have been looking into, you know, alternative ways to make money. I looked at um, laundromat. Um, I don't know if I'll do the laundromat thing. It, it seems like it could be a way to make some money, but I don't know if I'll do that. I've been also looking at, before I signed up with my mentor, there was a chance that I could have signed up. I think it was around the same time I think I already signed up. There was a chance I could have signed up for a, um, a different mentorship where there was this group of people who met out in, I live in Baltimore County, so they met in Arundel County, where they had, uh, where they talked about notes, real estate notes. And I'm thinking, that's very, very interesting. Um, basically, once I learned more about it, how notes operate, I was like, I like that notes are something I can get into because basically a note is a loan. The book that I reviewed in a previous video, a book is a loan. I mean, a note is a loan that uh, basically a car note, a house note, which is normally called a mortgage. Uh, you can get a credit card note, um, but that's really just, you just call it a credit card, a bank note. So basically, a note is debt. So I would own the loan on a property, like I would own your mortgage if you had a mortgage. So instead of paying Bank of America, you would pay me. And to me, you know, you most of the times, um, individual investors, you're going to pick up not the top, top tier properties, but if I can get a property where I have a note on that property and I have good equity and I just get passive income once I figure out why. You know, readjust, because you can readjust how much the person's paying in principal and interest, how much you're getting in arrears, and you can make some money, and it's passive, and that's really what I want. Um, because once I, I think once I get to 10, 20 rental properties, I think I'm going to take a step back and probably get a property manager. It's just like, yeah, you make more money, make about 10% more to gross rent. Make 10% more gross rent managing itself, but like, when I get to 20 and I, I don't have to work anymore, I really don't care about that extra money. For me, it's not all about money. It's about lifestyle. I'm not trying to be stressed out all the time or, you know, because as you get more properties, there's more people who can call you, more people, more things that can go wrong. And I'd rather things go wrong, somebody else handles it and not just pay the bill. I don't have to deal with the stress and everything. That's just how I'm set up. Uh, I don't need every single dollar that there is. I just need enough for me to get by. Like, I'm not really, oh, I could save, you know, like, I'm not into string couponing or anything like that, or, you know, saving money. Is it really worth it? Because, like, you can't sleep because you're stressed out. People call me 3 o'clock in the morning, you're stressed out. You know, different people, different strokes, but I, I don't think it's going to be for me. I'll see when I get there. I might say, screw that, that's too much money to get somebody else, but... 
and once I get the 1020 property, then once I get set back and get a property manager. Well, now while I'm learning the game and learning all the ins and outs and knowing somebody's getting over on me or not. Okay, so there's that. And then the next thing that I've been looking into, I've been looking into investing into stocks. Uh, I've been picking up some dividend stocks slowly but surely. I'm not a stock expert. Um, I'm still learning how to pick, so I won't do like a video on it. But I can tell you some of the stocks I've been looking at. Um, I signed up for the drip for um, General Mills. This was like no fees or anything like that. And that's been doing okay. Um, I did mostly dividend stocks. And then um, I got a random little chunk of money. Basically, when I was in college, I had a job. I guess they paid me a couple of times and I stopped using the little payday card that they gave me. So I had about like a couple hundred dollars um, left over from a job that I then had. So I, I, I just went and said, you know what, screw it, I'm going to invest in some of these growth companies. So I invested in, uh, I think I got like a share of Tesla, a couple of shares of Alibaba, and um, a share of Netflix or something. I forget the ratios. But now, it's a little bit, but I'm invested, and those stocks were way more up and down than my little dividend stocks that I was invested in. But I'm getting used to it, and at least this way, you know, I didn't miss out on the boat. I know I'm kind of late to the Netflix thing, maybe kind of late to the Tesla, but maybe not late to Tesla because they're not really making a profit. I'm invested in Alibaba, like, that's like the Chinese version of Amazon, you should look into them. But I'm invested, you know, at least that way, if the... These become the next world power companies. I, I get a little slice of the pie. I'm in there. I'm in the game. So that feels good. And I got, I'm got. i going to do a video. I've been taking Spanish lessons. I'll let you guys know how my experience has been with take lessons to get in a bad. And I just wanted to give you guys an update. And be sure if you like the hoodie, I'll put the links in the videos below. I'll put the link to the shirt. Uh, it, it's comfortable. The quality is good. We I mean, like the design. And people ask you, like, if somebody asks you where you get that, especially once you start telling people you do real estate, um, people uh, know, kind of like, oh, you know, he's he's promoting his brand. In this way, this is something that's not just my brand, so you're not just a walking billboard of me. It's what you do, too. So this is Nick signing out. Thank you.